this segment of Gas Powered Thoughts, we're going to continue with our gas goblin conversion. We're going to need the main chassis from the donor model. We're going to need the main drive assembly, which we built in the previous step. And we're going to need uh, the bulk of the conversion parts, which is this part of the frame that you see. Once this is done in the next step, we'll combine this with the motor and the landing gear, and we'll have the chassis pretty much complete. We're going to start this step off with the remainder of the donor model, which uh, we hadn't taken apart already, which is the, the main chassis part and the tail boom. Uh, we're going to start to dissect this and take the parts we need from the donor model and add in conversion parts to get where we need to go. Go ahead and remove the tail boom as you normally would. Set that aside. We'll use it again later. Most of the work we're going to do here is with the main chassis. We're going to separate the upper plate from the lower frames. Then we're going to disassemble the lower frames and replace most of the parts with pieces from the new conversion. All right, you're going to want to separate the upper plate from the lower frames. Uh, so you just take out the bolts across the top that hold this plate in, including the, the canopy mount. Take this off as a unit, and then we're going to take this all apart and we're going to need just a few parts out of this, which you'll see uh, just in a second. You're going to need a few parts from the donor model from the original motor plate, which you don't need the plate itself. You do need the springs, and you do need the two uh, mount studs, the lock nuts, and the washers. You'll need the original pinion guard. You'll need the three frame spacers. And if you're not going to use the KDE reinforced landing gear um, brackets, you'll need the landing gear brackets from the original donor model. Here we're going to put the main drive into the upper plate. You're going to take the uh, mount studs from the original motor mount, thread them into the, the top holes on the uh, uh, upper bearing block, which looks just like the original motor plate, so it's pretty easy to uh, figure that out. Put those in with uh, red or green thread lock, thread them in until they're flush with the bottom, let that set up, and then put uh, the flat washers and lock nuts on that. Take the springs from the original uh, motor mount, there's holes for those, and then this is going to go into the, into the upper plate just like the original does, just slides in. You'll need to compress the spring and pull the, the uh, belt over the pulley uh, and get that aligned and then we'll, we'll set the tension and tighten it up in the next step. Once the main drive is inserted you want to set the belt tension on the main drive belt. This is done pretty much the same way as you would if it were still the electric model. You're going to pull tension on the main drive and then tighten up these lock nuts. Now there's an alignment key you can use here. The rear of the upper bearing block needs to align with the front of this upper chassis plate. If you line those two parts up, the belt tension is going to be about where you need it to be. Um, that'll, that'll set it at the proper tightness. You just push the two parts apart and then uh, tighten these two lock nuts. Now once that's done, you want to make sure that the belt is running true on the, on the drive pulley. Um, that it's not hanging off the bottom or dragging on the top of the plate. If it is, then you may have to change the position of this pulley up on the, on the clutch. You remember we put some shims in there that allow you to move the belt. You can really move it up or down depending on where those shims go. And you will have to take it apart to make that, uh, to make that adjustment. But you definitely want this to run true and not uh, drag on, on, the, on the top or run off the bottom edge of the, um, the pulley. Once you've got this uh, you know, running true, then we're ready to go on to the next step. These are the parts needed to put the frame together. You need the two frame halves from the conversion, the pinion guard from the donor model. We're going to need the three frame spacers that we took out of the lower frame, two more frame spacers that came from the conversion kit, 
the battery tray and pinion guard that it's in the conversion, also the frame doublers, finally the uh, uh, isolators for the tank. Here we're going to put together the battery tray and the pinion guard. Uh, this stuff can really only go together pretty much one way. Uh, the, the plates have uh, uh, beveled holes for the flathead screws and these are the same flathead screws that came out of the donor model uh, that held the battery tray together. On this pinion guard, this uh, spacer actually goes in the top slot. Uh, you, can, you can see it's the one basically in the middle. Uh, later this will turn out to be the top. Okay, now when you've got the uh, battery tray and the pinion guard done, uh, they'll look like this. You can go ahead and fully tighten these bolts with thread lock. Set these aside. We'll put them in in the next step. Kit comes with a roll of this U-shaped uh, rubber isolator, which is, this is to isolate the fuel tank. You want to cut this into two strips of about 335 millimeters. It can be a little bit longer because you can trim it and there's enough. And you want to take this and slip it over the frame, starting in the bottom of the fuel cutout, uh, about where that hole is. And you're going to thread this all the way around, fitting the U-channel to fit this shape. And when you're done, it'll look uh, something like this. It's a little difficult to get this to, to bend around. Uh, I used a heat gun to make the, the rubber more flexible. But once it's done, it'll fit... Uh, fit pretty well and, and made up and um, it just takes a little time so uh, take your time with it. We're going to put uh, the frame doublers on the bottom uh, front of each frame. These came with a conversion. They're going to bolt into this position. You're going to put the 8 millimeter button head bolt uh, through this hole. Use a lot washer and lock nut on the back. Uh, you make sure you've got an opposite pair. This doubler goes on the outside of each frame. You can go ahead and tighten that up, but make sure the holes in the front uh, align properly. Here we're going to attach two frame spacers to the bottom of, in this case, the left frame. They're going to go on the inside. They attach with an 8 millimeter socket head and a finishing cap in the front, 12 millimeter towards the rear. You can thread lock these and fully tighten them. And you want to take the battery tray, which we assembled earlier, noting that this horizontal slot goes towards the rear of the frame. We're going to go into these two, uh, the tabs go into the slots there. Use an 8 millimeter bolt in the front, which you can fully tighten. Also use an 8 millimeter bolt and finishing uh, cap in the back. But you don't want to tighten this one up, you want to leave it loose. Uh, that'll be important uh, in a couple of steps. Now we're going to take the new pinion gu uh, guard. It's going to go into this slot in the battery tray. Simply push it in and then use one of the 8 millimeter bolts with a finishing washer and uh, bolt that in. Make sure you don't tighten this one either uh, because we're gonna, that's going to be important in the next uh, set of installation steps. Here we want to put the two frame halves together Start off by taking the fuel tank from the pre-assembly, set it into place just below the radio tray or the battery tray. Make sure it's uh, square to the frames. Take the remaining frame half, set it on top of that. The tank is captured by the isolators in the frames. Use the bolts that came with the conversion, 8 millimeters in these positions, these four positions, 12 millimeter here, Use finishing washers. You'll need some of the optional ones that uh, were in the required parts. Make sure you leave the two on this side in this position and the other side um, loose because we're going to need to spread the frames to get the upper plate in place in the next step. At this point you'll see the, the fuel tank is in between the frames like this. You've got the um, pinion guard in place. Again, these four bolts are going to be left loose. These can all be tightened and thread locked in the front. There's none in the back that's going to be handled by the upper, upper chassis. Okay, now we're going to put the upper, upper plate in from the original model that has the main drive uh, connected to it into these frames. And we've purposely left these four bolts, these two and these two loose, so the frame can be spread a little bit. 
That's because the main drive has these uh, socket head bolts that protrude on it. And we want the frame to spread a little bit so that this can just drop into place. And it will drop in and you can line it up on where those bolts slot. Go ahead and put the bolts in from the original donor model across this plate including the uh, canopy mount in the back. The last piece we're going to put into this is back um, on the back of the frame here where the throttle servo is going to go there's four little tabs. We're going to take the original pinion guard from the donor model and that's going to simply tab in to these holes like so. It's going to go in that position. Uh, it's not held in by anything so um, until you put the landing gear on it and tighten the frame together it's going to be flopping around but you may need to hold the frames together when um, you add the motor in. At this point you're going to complete attaching the upper chassis plate to the frames using the standard bolts that came in the original model. Uh, just these eight bolts across the top and the canopy mount. You'd want to use thread lock as you normally would. That takes care of the assembly of the basic frame. Next up we're going to continue to combine some of the pre-assembly parts, uh, the, the engine mount plate and actually install the engine into this. So that's coming up next.